Hoje, no programa Califórnia Contato, iremos fazer uma reportagem alargada do pintor e escultor Nathan Oliveira, para finalizar uma reportagem das festas da Nossa Senhora da Assunção de Trolloc. Viaje connosco até à Califórnia, aqui na RTP Internacional. Olá, bem-vindos à 104ª edição do programa Contato Califórnia. A equipe de trabalho do programa encontra-se férias, por isso sou eu a trazer hoje duas reportagens bem distintas. Estamos em frente a uma das mais conceituadas universidades mundiais, a Universidade de Stanford. Por aqui passaram centenas de prémios Nobel, nomes como Condoleezza Rice, Chelsea Clinton, Tiger Woods e Nathan Oliveira. Nathan Oliveira nasceu na Califórnia em 1928 e é um dos mais reconhecidos pintores e escultores da atualidade nos Estados Unidos. Foi professor de arte durante várias décadas em universidades como Stanford e Oakland. No ano 2000, recebeu a distinção pelo Presidente de Portugal, de Comendador da Ordem do Infante Dom Henrique. Nos Estados Unidos, já foi galardoado com dezenas de prémios pela Academia de Artes de São Francisco, Cambridge, Chicago e Nova York. Desde 1950, já realizou cerca de 100 exposições a solo e centenas em grupo nas mais conceituadas galerias mundiais. É considerado um dos pioneiros no regresso da figura ao movimento do expressionismo abstrato nos Estados Unidos. O Coordenador-Geral do Contato de Califórnia, Oswaldo Palhinha, acompanhado pelo artista João Brito, passou o dia com Nathan Oliveira e conta-nos a sua história. Nathan, é indeed a prazer estar aqui hoje no seu estúdio. É bom ter você aqui. Obrigado. O seu background é português. Portuguese. Yes, Sim, meu pai came from Madeira uh -huh. and uh, and my grandfather came from Lisbon mm -hmm. and then my grandfather great grandfather on the other side my mother's side came from the Azores uh -huh. which island Saigon, I don't know I think San Miguel San Miguel I didn't go to Portugal until about oh say eight years ago and once I found got off the plane I really found my identity mm -hmm. I, I felt a real, true relationship to the people that was there. Like they were like my relatives, in a sense. Yeah. I uh, got off the airplane and went through the customs, and suddenly I saw my family. I mean, it was as if I'd come home. Part of your roots. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm very proud of that. As a child, you're, you're, you're asked to become an American. Yes. You have to, don't talk, speak Portuguese. Don't, you know, my family used to talk, speak Portuguese at home. Yes. And they said, no, no, yeah. we don't want you to yeah. speak Portuguese yeah. because yeah. this is America, yeah. you're an American. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a shame because I really, yeah. now, you know, I would yeah. have loved to be able to speak yeah. Portuguese, but so I can't. So. But I do, uh, Nijon is bringing back from that time. Some my words. Words, mm. yeah. Costas, Veja Porta, Mosca Tonta. Mosca Tonta. <laughs> I'm 70, I'm 78 now. Mm. I don't know how much I can learn. My head, sometimes it's like a pudding, you know. <laughs> I have a hard time uh, um, remembering things that I have to do, yeah. <laughs> let alone uh, learn another language. I What kind of style you painting? Abstract? Well, as a young artist, I was, went to school to become a portrait painter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got there, the whole revolution of um, of modern art was starting. Mm -hmm. And I was taken up into the whole idea of it all. And so, uh, yes, I started out as a youngster uh, at the uh, California College of the Arts in Oakland um, as a, um, a painter of the figure, but then I started to abstract it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I became a, a kind of an abstract figurative painter, if you want to call it, an expressionist, yeah. they called it. Mm -hmm. And um, I got out of school and um, went into the army. Mm -hmm. And um, 
but came back and then I taught at the school I was where I was, where I was, went to school. And then I also started my career. And uh, suddenly in 1957, a dealer in New York, the name of uh, Charles mm -hmm. Allen, mm -hmm. contacted me. He'd seen some, uh, some, uh, some of my, so your work? my work, which was figurative abstract, mm -hmm. and um, invited me to come to New York, my work mm -hmm. to come to New York. And from that, at that point, um, my career just kind of jumps up very high. Wonderful. One. And before I knew it, I was showing with Picasso and Matisse and uh, Henry Moore in big exhibitions in, uh, in the world. Cool. And uh, certainly exhibited in New York, one-man shows in New York. Um, and, and was part of the whole abstract expressionist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but figurative movement. Here I was painting and showing next to these great uh, giants of modern art. And um, I was overwhelmed with it. Wow. And, and it was complicated too, because uh, how does a 26-year-old <laughs> artist from California, mm -hmm. you know, deal with all this attention? Of course. So it was difficult in some ways. And uh, uh, the pressure was very keen, but I liked it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but by this time, my wife and I had our t first two children. And uh, around 1963, 64, I was mm -hmm. getting tired of running back and forth between here and New York. Mm -hmm. And um, you decided for California. I decided to stay here in California. The first graphic I ever made, the first print I ever made, was a bullfight. Mm -hmm. And then, because I was so enthralled with Goya, you know. Of course. The incredible artist. Goya was in love also with bulls. Oh, he bull. loved the bulls, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew nothing about, you know, the rituals, but I, I, there was something about the spirit of the whole thing that mm -hmm. I loved very much. Mm -hmm. As an artist, what is your first love? Painting or sculpture? Oh, painting. Painting. Yeah, fundamentally, yeah. Yes. yes. But you know, I think being an artist, you have to paint like, like a, a, a worker every day. You have to be in your studio every day for, to wait, waiting for moments where that will become critical for you when you're working. Inspiration doesn't come like a bolt of lightning. It, it, it is with you when you're, when you're engaging the work. And uh, sometimes, you, sure, you think about things and suddenly you have an idea and then you can get very enthused about that. Mm -hmm. But the um, real inspiration comes out of the work itself. So, you know, I have to come to work if I don't feel good, if I don't feel it's right. Uh, I'd rather go and play in the sunshine or go to the ocean. Uh, sometimes I do that, but uh, for the most part, it's here in the studio that counts. That counts. Yeah. And no Saturdays, no Sundays. I mean, it, you work through. You, you don't ride a kind of inspired, inspired wave yeah. in, in, as a painter. It moves up and down. And, um, or you get into a, a kind of dead period and you can't think about things. Somehow they just don't work and you get very depressed. Manet, Monet, uh, when he would get depressed as a painter, he would go to bed. Mm -hmm. And the wife would go around and say, shh, shh, don't, don't, you know, Monet's in bed, <laughs> he's depressed. He needs to stay there for a week <laughs> or until he's, you know. Yes. I have a friend who does the same thing. He's a Japanese artist. When he gets depressed, he goes to bed. Yeah. He stays there maybe two weeks. Wow. I don't do it. I'm not quite that bad. No. But I do get, I can get very down about the work mm -hmm. because the ideas are not growing, they're not developing. And it's, but it's a very necessary condition to, yes. to advance. 